Okay, in this video, we'll be analyzing a heating curve. So, um, as time goes on, so first of all, notice our axes. Time goes on and heat's being added uh, to a substance. And you can um, record the temperature over time. And uh, you should also witness a few things going on here. So, um, there's a lot of information we could pull off this, uh, off this chart. So first of all, um, the substance is has undergone two phase changes, and I can tell because um, this this segment right here is associated with potential energy, and I know this because there is no change in temperature here. Okay, and then as also right here, so the flat segments are uh, phase changes and the type of energy it's associated with is potential energy okay and there's no change in temperature there either so <clears throat> you're gonna see that this one since there are two phase changes and then uh, this one here so this one here happens after this one then I know this one must be um, it must be boiling from C to B and from E to D right here it must be melting, our substance must be melting. So I'm gonna go ahead and write solid to liquid above the line here. Okay, and then from C to B, it's it's going from liquid to gas. Okay, um, so what happens before point E is our, our substance is entirely solid. Okay, so from point F to point E. So it's, it's all solid. Okay, and then, um, so, as it heats up, so as this heats up from F to E, um, right when you hit point E, the temperature will stop increasing, but the hot plate will be on. So imagine you're boiling this, or you're trying to boil something, when and you start with, like, let's say this is for water. It's obviously not for water, because water doesn't melt at 40 Celsius. So, but pretend you're thinking of ice cubes in a beaker, Okay, when you get to E, um, the the uh, what you're gonna witness, you actually see in the beaker, you'll see some solid and liquid. You're gonna see both phases. Okay, but before point E, you're all you will see is is solid. That's all you'll see in the beaker. Okay, and when you get to point D, um, your substance has become all liquid. When you get to point D, um, so you will no longer see any ice. Okay, from D to C, you're just going to see all liquid. Okay, now when you go from, when you get to point C, that's when it starts, begins to boil. So you're going to start to see some steam at point C. Um, and then when you get to point B, all of the liquid will be gone at point B. So all liquid remaining will be gone. Okay, likewise on, on point C, all the solid... Um, wait, I'm sorry, uh, this coincides with point D, sorry, so all solid is gone at, finally, at point D, and then when you get to point B, all the liquid's gone, and so from B to A, it's, uh, you will see all gas. So, um, if you recall our old tutorial on this, um, these points right here is associated with the energy of motion, or kinetic energy. So the heat energy is going into making the system, making the molecules of the system move and have vibrational energy. Okay, and then also from um, from uh, D to C, this is kinetic. Okay, and then from point B to A, this is also associated with kinetic energy. Now, um, a couple notes about the equations that you're going to use, or actually, look before we get there. There's a couple of things you could pull from this this heating curve. As you can tell right here, since it's going from solid to liquid, it is melting here, and so you could determine the melting point by looking at the graph here. So the melting point is right about. Let's see, this is about 50. So I would say the melting point is about 42 degrees Celsius okay and you could also tell the you could also pull the boiling point off of this by looking at this line 
right here. Okay, so if that's 70, this is about 65. So the uh, boiling point must be about 65 degrees Celsius. A um, couple notes about uh, problem solving. So from here to here, so from E to F, um, this is, this is uh, you could use the regular heat equation for E to F. Okay, so for E to F, you're going to use Q equals MC delta T. And the specific heat you use, it has to be for the solid substance. Um, now, when you get from E to D, you cannot use the heat equation because there's no delta T. So we're going to have to use... Uh, we're going to have to use a different formula. We're going to have to use, for, so from E to D, you're going to have to use Q equals N times the heat, the enthalpy of fusion. And N is in moles. And these heats of phase changes are usually in kilojoules per mole. So when you multiply the two, you'll wind up with just joules or kilojoules. Um, now from uh, point C to D right here, um, this again, there's a delta T, so you're again going to use Q equals MC delta T. And the C value you use needs to be, you need to make sure that's for the liquid form of the substance, whatever substance it might be. Um, now from um, C to B, this is another phase change, so there's no delta T. So we're going to have to use Q equals N delta H vaporization. Okay, and then these values you could find from a from a book somewhere, or or go online and look it up. Um, now the last thing here is for A to B. So in this, if you were doing a problem. Again, there's there's a delta T just like from D, just like from uh, C to D and E to F. You could use the heat equation for this portion. Okay, just make sure that the C value you use is for the gas form of the substance. Okay, and then that is a heating curve. It's endothermic. Heat's being added over time, so all your heat, all your Q amounts need to be positive. So all your delta T's are going to be positive because your final is going to be bigger than your initial. So those will be positive. And then when you plug into these values here, these should also be positive. So this is a heating curve. And your values should be positive. So this is endothermic. And all your Q values should be positive. Um, actually, not planning to make a video on a cooling curve. Just realize that all the processes are reversed. So on a cooling curve, for example, um, from here to here on a cooling curve would be condensation, um, and it and your system would be losing heat. Um, and then from here to here, if you, if you went this direction from D to to E, uh, it would be freezing. And, it, and this value would actually be a negative number. You would use a negative there to indicate that heat is being removed from the system and going off to the surroundings. Okay, and then if you're using the heat equation for cooling something down, of course your delta T in that case are going to be negative, meaning your Q will also be negative. So realize that this entire process can go in reverse if you do a cooling curve. So that kind of concludes our tutorial. Actually, um, I have a couple uh, practice questions on, on a heating curve, and I'm going to go to the next slide for that. Okay, so um, so it's a heating curve. So see if you could answer these questions in your notebook. This is actually the same exact heating curve, so you don't need to draw this twice in your notebooks. So question one, is it being cooled or heated? Uh, well, as the title implies, it's being heated. Is energy being absorbed or released? So that's for you to answer. Okay, and question two, what process is occurring between E and D? Question three, what phase is it at 30 degrees? Question four, what phase is it from D to C? All right, so that's the end of our tutorial.